In this video, we will take what I hope will be a brief moment to discuss three international trade organizations. I have to tell you that the relevant section in the curriculum is quite vast. It includes a lot of history, a lot of discussion on the activities of these trade organizations, but I think you basically will be tested on potentially on the goals and functions of them, the roles that they play. If you want to learn a bit more about the history, by means go ahead, but I don't think it's I don't think it's vital for you successfully passing the exam. The three organizations that you'll need to know about are the IMF, the International Mon Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the WTO, which is the World Trade Organization. So let's start with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. And each one of these institutions will have uh, you know somewhat different objectives and different ways of acting. Uh, the first one, IMF, it stands ready, so constantly ready to lend foreign currency to a country which is experiencing problems, so to member states, members of the IMF. Um, it makes these loans out of uh, reserves of gold and currencies that have been contributed by member states. So why would you potentially need to borrow, for example, the US dollar um, if you are not the United States, that is? Well, the classic reason given is that this results from bans of payment problems uh, and a current deficit um, or current account deficit. If you are importing more than you are exporting, so your imports are higher than your exports, and you're probably paying for these imports in US dollars or some other sort of internationally accepted currency, uh, the amount of dollars you need to spend to buy stuff from abroad is not the same as the amount of dollars coming in from your exports, and you've got a problem because you need to uh, balance the books here and um, the IMF can give you a loan, a temporary loan to stabilize the situation. Um, another you know case which isn't necessarily talked about in the book but sometimes you know a country finds its currency under speculative attack and then it can borrow um, foreign currency to try and defend its own currency by doing into you know foreign exchange market interventions this is something I've I've often witnessed but um, you know the loan given by the IMF here is not just a loan to deal with the situation and then kind of forget about it no uh, what they will want you to that what they will want to see is evidence of you trying to kind of restore um, equilibrium make this more sustainable so um, the IMF will um, lend you money under strict conditions. They will want to monitor your macroeconomic situation, your macroeconomic policy, to um, to eventually resolve the problem, which uh, or the, the you know the circumstances which led to the problem in the first place. Um, the goal, as stated in your book of the IMF, is to ensure stability of um, international money system, the international monetary system, ensure the stability of international exchange rates, um, ensure the stability of international payments, and, uh, you know, all of these stable exchange rate, stable payment systems, stable monetary policy systems um, help countries trade so that countries can trade. Right. Um, right. It's also on top of all this, or you know, in, on top of having these goals, it's also a forum uh, for cooperation between countries on monetary matters. And I guess it also has these sort of, well, not secondary, but additional goals. So it's supposed to facilitate economic growth. It's supposed to, um, you know, facilitate uh, trade development. It's supposed to 
help reduce poverty. It's supposed to um, encourage and promote employment. So lots of additional goals as well, but its m main function is to give loans to countries which need to stabilize their currencies, uh, typically due to current account uh, problems or you know uh, balance of payments problems. Now, the next institution that you need to know about is the World Bank or the entire World Bank group, because it's not just the World Bank, there are additional institutions under the under the framework of the World Bank. Here the objective is very different, or the goal is very different. Um, it, this is much more focused on developing countries. The IMF helps anybody who's in trouble. So not so long ago, for example, they had to help Greece with its um, sort of uh, economic situation. The World Bank doesn't necessarily help developed nations. It helps developing countries fight, primarily fight poverty. Right. And of course, um, it's not just about fighting poverty, it's also about enhancing economic growth, or promoting economic growth, but importantly, in a way that is environmentally responsible or environmentally sound. Not growth for the sake of growth, but sort of uh, working to the detriment of the environment, environmentally sound economic growth. Right, uh, in a way, although poverty here is at the very forefront, the World Bank tries to create conditions which um, kind of promote economic infrastructure uh, or creating boosting the economic infrastructure necessary for economic development. So let's say creating the economic, but also not just economic, but also administrative uh, legal uh, infrastructure, which is essential for development. What do we mean by that? Uh, well, strengthening government strengthening government, strengthening um, the legal system and the judicial system. Many countries need that. Uh, you know, protecting rights. Protecting rights. The rights of individuals. But also property rights. Right, which need to be enforced, and also making sure that contract law is enforced, that we, when we sign an agreement it is then upheld, and if it isn't, the judicial system uh, can, can, uh, can handle that, right? Um, helping to develop financial systems, banks for example, which are essential to economic growth. Fighting corruption trying to alleviate it. All of these are necessary in terms of developing conditions where we can thrive economically, right? And what the World Bank does is it funds projects in these fields which, which kind of help countries develop in respect of these fields, but also provides technical knowledge and expertise of a financial, but also technical nature um, to aid countries uh, in carrying out, carrying out, carrying out, sorry, such initiatives. Now, there are two important entities that are affiliated with the World Bank and operate under the World Bank Group, and those are the IBRD and the IDA. The first one is the International Bank. Uh, for reconstruction and development and development and the second is the International Development Agency and whilst they operate in a similar way you have to know some important differences so um, what do they do? Well the first one, the IBRD 
it typically issues bonds in the sort of international capital markets and these bonds have a very high rating they are triple a rated so it gets funding this way but because the bonds have such a high rating they um, are you know relatively low cost bonds this is low cost funding and by get, having access to uh, the, the world's sort of capital markets, it can quite cheaply borrow money and then lend the money out. So those funds, those dollars are lent out to, um, to countries who need them to, to, to fund projects, right? Um, and they do it typically, they lend it out at a relatively small margin meaning, you know, um, they pretty much pass the low cost on to the, uh, to the subsequent borrowers. So they provide low cost loans. Why? Because they themselves has, have access to low cost funding, so low percentage, low interest rate loans to, to countries who would otherwise not even be able to get money uh, to, to, to raise funding in the, in the global capital markets because uh, they don't have access to them due to their sort of poor situation or, or bad situation. On the other hand, you've got the, well, actually the IBRD doesn't just fund its activities via borrowing in the international markets. They also have quite a lot of own capital which was contributed by member countries, but also the own capital is a bit like equity. So all the, the profits which they make get turned into retained earnings and kind of grow the capital of the institution. And we also have the IDA. Oh, okay, sorry. The, watch out, the IBRD is one of the world's largest so-called supranational borrowers. So within the fixed income section of the curriculum, we talk about supranational issuers of bonds or supranational borrowers, the IBRD is one of the biggest of those. Uh, now, properly for the IDA. This is the world's largest source of, watch out, interest-free loans. So when these people lend, it's typically on a zero interest basis, interest free, not low interest, no interest loans. Okay, um, and this kind of assistance goes to the poorest countries in the world. The way they get funded is, of course, um, I mean, when you make these loans, you hope that they will be repaid. So the funds which are repaid from the existing loans can be lent out to. Um, to new recipients, but not all of not all of the loans obviously get repaid. These are, after all, countries in uh, sometimes in dire condition, right? So, the funds which the IDA has at its uh, had it, has at its disposal, the funds get replenished or topped up, so to speak, every three years by uh, donor countries, and these donor countries, at least your book claims, are 40 countries um, at the time of the curriculum's writing, but don't worry about that details. It's details, it's just, just a fact that I remember from reading the curriculum. Right, I think that's enough for the World Bank Group. And finally, for the WTO, the World Trade Organization, to be honest, this is the one which really has trade at its heart. And the title of this video was International Trade Organization. Well, this is the true trade organization indeed. Um, this is an, a global institution, organization of countries, which has as its mission to regulate or it regulates cross-border um, trade relationships. Uh, create frameworks for these relationships and then try to make sure that countries abide by the rules which have been set uh, obviously on a global scale all with the idea of uh, promoting 
as much as possible the free um, free movement of goods, services, capital, uh, etc. So what we associated with what we associate with trade. More specifically, um, they design and implement trade agreements, which allow countries to trade with one another. They act as a platform for negotiations on trade matters between countries. Sorry, negotiations. They also settle disputes with, of, which often uh, arise, with trade being the catalyst here. Um, they review the trade policies of member countries to see if they are abiding by the rules, which they don't always do, member countries. Um, they try to make sure that trade policies are transparent and coherent, so they attempt to ensure transparency, but also coherence, to, so cohesion of uh, trade policies. And as most of these institutions do as well, they provide advice. technical expertise, you know, training. They also carry out research on trade-related matters to benefit the member countries.